I wish you were here now, Quincy. You were always there for me when I needed you. Even now, it's your friends who've made me strong enough to carry out what I must do. First, it was Father Janos who started me on this agonizing task. Now, with the aid of your old allies, it looks like we'll end this horrible scourge. So much has happened these past few days. Mr. Alexander Morris. Thank you. Alexander. Arthur, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness while I've been in your city. And now for you to sponsor me in London's most prestigious club. Nonsense. Right? Your brother and I were extremely close. Here, let me introduce you to some of the other members of the Hades Club. Devlin. Alexander, I'd like you to meet Devlin Goldacre. Devlin Alexander Morris. I believe I've mentioned his late brother, Quincy. Yes, you have. Mr. Goldacre, this certainly is a pleasure. It will be an honor to be accepted into your club. So, this is the brother of the famous Quincy Morris. <laughs> I suppose even London isn't big enough for more than one Texan at a time. What brings you here? Well, it's an unusual story, really. I received a letter from a Romanian priest telling me I should investigate the circumstances surrounding my brother's stabbing. Ah, your Romanian priest couldn't have directed you to a more peculiar city. And now, with the murders in the <laughs> newspapers... <laughs> oh, do shut up, Leopold. Never mind our Czechoslovakian drunk and his ramblings. So, how long have you been in our fair city? Well, a number of months, actually. I got a bit sidetracked from my investigation when I met Anisette. Since we became engaged and her father took ill, I really haven't had the time to pursue the matter further. Yes, well, <laughs> I can see how Anisette could have that effect on a man. <laughs> Excuse me, sirs. I have a message from Mr. Morris. For me? Thank you. Good Lord. It's a note from Mr. Bowen's doctor. Mr. Bowen has just suffered a fatal heart attack. I have sedated Miss Bowen and would appreciate your presence tomorrow morning. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, perhaps I should go home. I could do with some rest as well. Pardon me. Death is such a dreadful business. Anisette? Oh, Alexander! Anisette, said you must let him go. Andrew is gone. I know, but it's so hard. I miss him so. Let me call the doctor to remove his body. The sooner he's in the ground, the sooner his soul can rest. You think <laughs> that death can take her from me? Oh, Daddy! Anisette! I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. I'm so glad you're here. Shh, it's all right. Where's the doctor? He's gone. He said it was a heart attack brought on by shock. Shock? An open window in this weather. I shall have to talk with Miss Culpepper. Oh, Alexander, I'm so tired. Why do things have to go away? Why can't all the things we love stay forever? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington.
Morris, isn't it? Mr. Goldacre. Indulge my curiosity. Why has Arthur sponsored you into our distinguished club? What in the world makes you think you belong? A gift, really, because of his friendship with my brother. Do you know how old this club is? Now, Arthur tells me that it dates to the turn of the century. He's wrong. It's far older than that. Typical of you Americans. You can't think any farther back than your own wealth history. Age is no indication of virtue. Take your immortal institution here. What does Hades Club mean, anyway? It's rather obvious. Abandon all hope, ye who enter. We're in hell, my boy. I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. Arthur is busy just now. I'm sure he'll be with you in a moment. Yes, he was my carriage driver. Ah. I had sent him to deliver this package and was beginning to wonder about his late return. Well, where was this package bound, sir? To the residence of Mr. Jonathan Harker. Let's 56. Rochester, Marble Arch. It was a gift for his son, young Quincy. Well, thank you so much, sir. Well, I suppose this belongs to you, then. <laughs> we found it by the body. Decapitation is a most horrible crime. <laughs> Strange. There's no accounting for the blood loss. Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Those are beautiful flowers, Mrs. Harker. Oh, I thank you, Mr. Morris. Well, I do love roses. They remind me of someone I once knew. Fragile, beautiful, <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> and how are you, Mr. Morris? Well, I'm fine, but. I'm worried about my fiancé, Anisette. Her father, Andrew Bowen, just passed away. Oh, how terrible. I'm sorry to hear it. I knew Mr. Bowen from business affairs. Poor Anisette. Well, I should tell her you send your condolences. But I'm afraid that's not all. The Homewood's carriage man has been, well, murdered. He was on his way to deliver a present to little Quincy. He was found decapitated, his body drained of blood. <sighs> Mina, have you looked in on Quincy? Not for a while, no. Perhaps you should. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, but I have some pressing matters which I must attend to. But I wanted if to talk to you If you wish to talk business, then come to my office. Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. That paper's not for a weak order today of those who loses their heads easily. <laughs> right messy it is. That fella with his head cut off and all, his blood gone. Ugh. Oh, he needs a drink. It's to the saucy jack when this day's over. Saucy jack? Haven't you heard of it, Gov? The best pub in the Strand. Me mouth is watering already for a mug of Rebecca's ale. <laughs>
23 Luxboro and King's Cross driver. Hello. I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Bistritz. In Romania. In Romania. Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. Eleven thirty five AM <laughs> Hello, sir. How's the day treating you? That could be better. Oh, I hate to see one of me customers in the mouse. <laughs> Tell you what, you give me your name and I'll get you a mug of ale on the apps. Well, Alexander Morris at your service. My name's Rebecca Eaton. I'm the owner of this fine establishment. Oh, careful. This one, Becky, is moody. Could be the murderer. <laughs> oh, keep your mouth shut. Don't mind them. They scared. Count of all the people being killed. Real unnatural like, too. Heads cut off and the body's all dry of blood. Hey, I'd lose my head for you, Becky. Oh, go on. <laughs> Strange killings, they is. And that woman in white been seen all over London. It's like that bloofer lady years ago. Bloofer? What kind of name is that? Never heard the like of for her since. She's a woman what bit youngins on the neck. Where'd you hear this? I read it in a book. I was delivering a bunch of them to that bookstore in King's Cross. What's it called? Let's see. <laughs> Me noggin's gone all rusty. Goldstein and Horn, Goldfield. Gold Acre? Yay, that's it. Gold Acre and Horner. Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. 12.30. May I help you? Mr. Horner? Alexander Morris. Mr. Holmwood has sponsored me into the Hades Club. I understand your partner's also a member? Oh, yes. Devlin mentioned you. It'll be a pleasure having you in our club. What brings you to my little bookstore? Well, this might sound a little bit strange, but I've been told you have a book about the Bluefer Lady. The Bluefer Lady? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. She would appear as a beautiful ghost-like woman with a horrible practice. She would summon children only to return them later, some on the verge of death. The children would call her Blufa instead of beautiful. Yes, there's a striking resemblance to some other cases I know of. Um, how much do I owe you? A gift from one Lord of Hell to another. From the library of Dr. John Seward, perfectly asylum. Hmm. I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. What do you want? Alexander Morris to see Dr. Seward. The doctor's busy. The loonies is acting up now. Go away! Grab <laughs> him! <laughs> Here, take this. You may need it. I'll see it till the doctor gets your car. Now,
1.55 p.m. One fifty five PM two ten PM I'd like to go to nineteen Saint Augustine's, Westminster. Two fifty PM three twenty PM three twenty PM Oh, I'm sorry. Arthur isn't here. He's at a meeting with Mr. Stransakowski, a fellow member of the club. Yes, I've met Mr. Stransakowski. He's a rather odd man. Oh, but it is so sad. He was such a gifted composer before the death of his wife, Ileana. It was a carriage accident in Europe at a place called Borgo Pass. She was buried in London where her family rests. She must have been very beautiful. Oh, yes. Although I never met her. Uh, and the ceremony was a closed casket. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must deliver this present to the Harkers. Well, I'd be glad to do that for you, Mrs. Holmwood. Oh, why, thank you. But call me Regina, please. Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. 21.00. Mr. Stransikowski, how are you? So, it is the Texan seeking companionship in this time of loss. No, no, I just... Ah, <laughs> you think you know of loss? I lost my wife. Oh, my poor Ileana. But she is not dead. No, she lives. I have seen her walking in the moonlight. Get hold of yourself, man. Oh, Iliana! <laughs> Please take me to 45 Fen Church, St. Paul's. Regarding our previous agreement... Mr. Morris, how can I help you? I'm delivering this for the Homewoods. It was the gift their coachman was taking to Quincy before he... Yes, uh... well, thank you very much. I've come on personal business as well. I feel a bit foolish, really. I, I don't know where to begin. So many strange things that have happened and, well, I have so many questions concerning... Yes, well... The... I appreciate that you think I can help, Mr. Morris, but this is my business office, and I'm quite busy. I see. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. Wait. Mr. Morris, please, I don't wish to appear careless. Here. Take this. A friend of mine gave this to Mina during troubled times. She would like Anna Set to have it to comfort her. Thank you, Mr. Harker. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. 
safe and warm your brows the stars caress tomorrow brings the sun again but now it is time to rest a lovely song there you are leaving poor anna set alone at a time like this you cad Come sit by me, Alexander. Julietta stopped by to try and cheer me up. She's offered to spend the night here. Always a pleasure to see you, Miss Adams. If anyone can make Aniset feel better, it's you. The Harkers have also been generous. Mina wanted you to have this necklace. Jonathan said that it had been given to them during a time of loss as well. You know, it's strange. I hate to say it, but... Last night I had a dream about your father passing away. I saw him lying there as peaceful as can be. He seemed to look up and there was a woman standing beside him. She shone like an angel and reached for him. And I saw his arms go to her and all around him was flowing white. And then she turned away and I woke up. I believe it was an angel come to take him to heaven. I feel her presence all around us. Even this cloth reminds me of my dream. May all of us go as peacefully. Eight fifty five PM Eight fifty five PM Please take me to twenty Surrey, the Strand. Nine fifty PM Good Lord, what was that? It was a wolf's howl, Governor. That's not a sound you want to be hearing around here. Last time I heard that, it meant death. The Demeter Wolf, they called it. Come off a ghost ship in a storm, sent by the devil himself. Only one still aboard was a captain, dead. The beast fled that damn ship, first chance it got, running off to the devil knows where. None of us saw it again till it came after me, made swales. I was watching from the woods, too far away to help. I seen it coming after him, snarling as loud as all the demons of hell. My knees gave out as I seen it leap at him. The merciful Lord blessed me so I wouldn't remember what happened to him, but as I fell, I swear, that wolf reached for swales with two arms as human as yours or mine. Poor old soul. I never found the beast. It's still out there somewhere, waiting for its next victim. I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. Eleven thirty PM Quincy's brother I gladly shake your hand, sir. Your brother was a fine friend and a true gentleman. Well, thank you, sir. I was wondering if I might take a I met my wits end for dealing with them. I can only think it is caused by the full moon. The red moon rising. So it's true then what they say about the moon and madness. The inmates often succumb to its influence. Farnsworth with his howling, Sherman drooling like a mad dog, and Renfield with his paranoid fits and ridiculous demands. It's almost as bad as the last time. Yes, you were saying? I 
I'm sorry I've bored you like this. I always ramble on about my work when I'm tired. Why don't you come back tomorrow after breakfast? All right, Doctor. Midnight. Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. Mr. Alexander Morris, the evil awakens. Beware the night. Nothing is safe. If you respect your dead brother's memory, send me your findings. Vince's friends can verify my claims. Father Janos Korceni. And it's set? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Hello, Miss Culpepper. I'm here to see you in a set. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. She's not to be disturbed. Six fifty-five a.m. Seven o'clock. A.M. Oh, Alexander, I'm so happy you're here. Nana said. How are you? I'm fine. But I'm worried about Juliet. 
she's so pale and has said such strange things lately. She has even taken to sleepwalking. How are you, Juliet? I'm doing well. I had another dream, and now that you're here, I must tell it to you both. I saw Andrew again. Oh? Yes. He told me that he is happy now, that he is finally at peace. His worries and troubles are no more. And then we hugged. And he said that you needn't worry, Anisette, that he is watching over you. I believe he is in heaven now. That's beautiful, Juliet. Yes, but it's so odd. Father never showed affection to me. I know that he loved me, but I can't think of the last time he said so, much less hugged me. But he is free now, Anna said, free from pain. He flies with the angels. He is free to show his love. I'm all right. I think I've overworked myself a bit. I just need some rest. Thank you, Anisette. All this sleepwalking's taking its toll. Let her rest. I'm concerned about Juliet. She's so pale and has taken to sleepwalking. What could be disturbing her? In these dreams, they seem odd and unnatural. Eight thirty AM I'd like to go to fifty two Bishops Bridge, Paddington. Eight fifty AM Nine o'clock AM Here's one of the reasons I could not meet with you yesterday. A number of our patients have been keeping me busy, but none more so than he. It's over! All my life! It's over! There's no way out! No! There's no way out! Good Lord, I believe he has actually gotten worse. Life! Life! The blood is the life! My lies! All of the lies! But it's here! Here! I tried, but no good. It's come back. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Good God, Doctor. Do you always let animals roam through the patient's rooms? Well, I... How did you get a hound in here? It's here. The blood is the life. The blood is the life. Strange, the tracks seem to go from the window to the bed and then back again. Well, I don't see how Renfield could have made them. There's no other mud in the room. Never underestimate the mind of the insane, Alexander. I've known Renfield to be capable of... What? What is it, Doctor? What? Oh, uh, nothing. But it really is time I got back to work. I'm sorry I haven't been much help. You wanted information about your brother, and I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. However... I believe my old mentor may be of some help. Dr. Abraham Van Helsing. I don't envy Dr. Seward his position. Working with lunatics like Renfield is not a pleasant occupation. Whatever could that poor fellow mean, the blood is the life. Twenty three Luxborough and King's Cross driver. Hello. Good day, sir. Name's Alexander Morris. Are there any telegrams for me? No, sir. Any telegrams will be delivered promptly to their recipient. My sin. Thank you.
I'd like to send an overseas telegram, please. And what is the destination, sir? Bistritz. Bistritz. In Romania. Hello. Good day, sir. Name's Alexander Morris. Are there any telegrams for me? No, sir. Any... 11.15 a.m. Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. I'm sorry, but Jonathan is not here. Oh, well, perhaps later. Well, pardon my curiosity, but are you going somewhere? Well, Quincy is going to visit his grandmother. Oh, well, during the holidays. It's been so long since she's seen him. And the country is lovely this time of year. Oh, I'm sure she'll be glad to have them. Grandparents thrive on the smiles of their grandchildren. I'd like to thank you for your gift to Anisette. The cross it was very nice. Cross? Oh, yes, an old family heirloom. I hope it comforts her. In exchange, may I present you with this? I thank you, Mr. Morris. Alexander, I'd like to talk to you tomorrow at Mr. Bowen's funeral. Very well. Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Byron, very good. That will be one pound. Very well. Oh my, what an interesting handkerchief. Oh, it's just a bit of cloth I found. Hmm. Perhaps you can tell me something about it. Afraid I can't help you there, but you might try the university. They have all sorts of scholars who can illuminate it for you. <laughs> Here, let me help. Oh, thank you. It's just a minor cut. It's never minor where blood is concerned. Horner could not help identify the cloth, but he recommended I try the university. I'm afraid I disturbed him when I cut my finger. The sight of blood must make him nervous. Please take me to 45 Fen Church, St. Paul's. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Harker. I'm sorry I disturbed you at your home yesterday. Yes, well, what's done is done. Sir, I was wondering what you know about my brother's stabbing. Really, there's nothing to tell. It was an unfortunate incident, nothing which concerns us now. Well, sir, maybe you never suffered such a loss. But my brother's death will concern me until this matter is settled. Young man, what happened, happened. You should be happy with your memories of him. Memories? For God's sake, man, this is all I have left of him! There has never been a greater tragedy. I didn't want to involve you. Whatever it is, I'm already involved. It's too late to stop what I've begun. Tonight. Come to my house tonight. But leave me now.
It may have taken a trip to his office, but I think I finally got through to that Mr. Harker. I wonder why he's so evasive. Now maybe with his help I can get to the bottom of what happened to my brother. 1.55 p.m. Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. News ain't pretty today, Gulp. There's been another murder. When will they catch the fiend? But this one's different. A lady was found. She still has her head, but not a drop of blood. Horrible. I bet the fella that's been doing this didn't have time to finish the job. The arch closing in on him. Just a matter of time now. Twenty three Luxborough and King's Cross driver. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I'd like to send an overseas telegram. And what is the destination, sir? Amsterdam, Holland. Amsterdam, Holland. I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate, Kensington. This is the strange white cloth I found in Andrew Bowen's hand. Interesting pattern. Uh, yes, those beautiful designs. Uh, roses, I believe. Uh, oh my. Uh, this cloth is over a century old. Where did you get this? Fine. Um, I found it at my fiancé's house. Well, I simply must study it further. You must let me keep it and telegram you with the results of my research. You simply must. Certainly. Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. I'm curious, are you the Gold Acre of the Gold Acre and Horner Bookstore? Yes. Why does that interest you? Been doing some reading in the faint hopes of becoming cultured? Well, recently I've been to your store. That partner of yours is a rather odd fellow. <laughs> yes. Horner serves a purpose. That store is merely a hobby. It means no more to me than this coin. <laughs> Goldacre declared himself to be the controlling partner of the Goldacre and Horner bookstore. He doesn't seem to have much respect for Alfred, I'm afraid. I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. Alexander, so good of you to join us at this sad time. Would you care for some tea? No, thank you. I'm very sorry about your driver. I wish that there was something that I could do. No more than I wish I could do something for Anisette. Such a sad night. We've not had such sorrow since your brother passed away. You know, I never did discover the circumstances surrounding Quincy's death. You would have been proud. While on our travels, we were beset by common criminals. Quincy sought to defend us and was cut down for his heroism. He was a good man, your brother. His death meant more to me than you know.
I feel sorry for my poor friends, the Holmwoods, on their recent loss. Thank heaven that my brother's passing was not like their driver's. Arthur's explanation of Quincy's death seemed to make sense. Why is Father Yano so concerned? Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Seven ten PM. Seven ten PM. And uh, who be this? Professor Van Helsing, this is Alexander Morris, brother of Quincy Morris. How do you do, sir? I am very glad to meet you. If you be Quincy's brother, then your friend I am. Consider it so. Thank you. Let me say likewise, sir. Yeah, good. Uh, Jonathan is telling me you have a certain knife. Uh, may I see it? Yeah, Quincy's knife. Sir, I wish to uncover the truth about Quincy's death. I am telling all to you now, but uh, first, uh, sit, sit. I'm sorry you've waited so long, but the truth is unbelievable. Miss Mina, speak true. What would you say, Mr. Morris, if I am telling you vampires exist? Well, I'd say you're pulling my leg. <laughs> Spoken like a true Texan, yeah? But I know pull your leg. They are real, and your brother died while killing one. You can't be serious. But he is. Believe me, I know how hard it is to accept such things. Hear me out. It was ten years ago that business is taking Mr. Jonathan Harker to Transylvania and the castle of Count Dracula, the vampire. He who is lord over all the Nosferatu. Unknowingly, Mr. Harker arranged for him to be coming here to London. There he is sucking the blood of the innocent Miss Lucy Vestrina. She who was fiancé to Mr. Arthur Holwood. Well, this can't be true. But it is. I wired Van Helsing, but it was too late. Dracula killed Lucy. But no normal death. For she arise again in unlife. It bring us much pain to stop her. Now, she is resting with the angels. Then we hunt Dracula down. We found his caskets, full of the earth he needed to survive, and destroyed them. We had succeeded. But then we discovered what he had done in our absence. He drank Mina's blood. He tried to make her like him, a creature of the night. But it is too late for him and he must flee back to his castle across the sea. We are giving chase. Miss Mina's very soul is depending upon us. We finally catch him, and there your brother is plunging this very knife into his breast. Such a victory. But no. Quincy is suffering terrible wounds at the hands of Dracula's gypsy servants. His last words are having no regrets. This is also impossible. This may help you. It's my journal of those trying times. I value it highly. I believe there is vampire walking the streets again. It is responsible for the murders. I know something of this. The blue for ladies. Yeah, yeah, there have been many blue for ladies. Lucy become one after she's suffering strange symptoms, sleepwalking and nightmares. But Juliet Adams, Anisette's friend, she has the same symptoms. I must be examining her. I finally met Professor Abraham Van Helsing. He told me the truth about Quincy's death. It's so strange, so macabre, but their earnest nature in Jonathan's journal convinced me. Can it be true when Van Helsing says there is a vampire stalking the streets, even now?
I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Anna said, I'd like you to meet Professor Van Helsing. Uh, very lovely girl. You are having my deepest sympathy on your recent loss. You're very kind, sir. Uh, please, when is the funeral? 10 o'clock in the morning at St. Joseph's Cemetery. I will be there. And this is Dr. John Seward. Pleased to meet you. And uh, who be this? Another young, lovely girl. Mine is making an old man's heart feel young again, yeah? Oh, sir. <laughs> Professor Miss Juliet Adams. Oh, a lovely name. You will forgive me, Miss Adams, but as a doctor, I must be speaking bluntly. You do not look well for one so young. May I be examining you as a doctor to a patient? Really, I feel fine. Dr. Van Helsing is the top in his field. You can trust him. All right. What is it, Doctor? What's wrong? Uh, not to worry, Miss Adams. Uh, I will be leaving some medicines in your room and around the house. Rest you need. Anna said she'll be watching you, yeah? Of course. You will be fine with me, Juliet. I'm not worried. I just wish Devlin would stop by. I've not seen him all day. Miss Anna said, I bid you whatever you do, do not be opening the windows. No matter what. Alexander, would you be a dear and give this to Devlin the next time you see him? I'm not sure I shall be able to. I'm very worried about Juliet. Dr. Van Helsing has discovered the bite of the vampire upon her and has left garlic in all the windows. This all seems so mad. How bad is it, Professor? She is bit by the vampire, but not so bad as to die yet. If she is bit again... I cannot believe it. It is too much like Lucy's ordeal. Yeah, but this time we know what it is. Come, you and I return to the asylum. We let Alexander go rest. All right now, Mr. Morris. The creature has fled. I owe you my life, sir. I wonder, did you happen upon her by accident? Or did she wait for you? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. This is the note that Juliet asked me to give to Devlin if I see him. <clears throat> Morris, I didn't hear you. You creep in like a cat. I didn't mean to startle you. Have you been to Anisette's? Is Juliet there? How is she? She's ill. But she did ask me to give you this. Oh, poor Juliet. Her world revolves around me. Why, I don't know. I love her. I would do anything for her, even die. It's me that's done this. I was in control, but now it's all slipping from my grasp.
Devlin Goldacre was drunk when I saw him. It's obvious he loves Juliet, yet he doesn't visit her. He seems to be grappling with some mysterious problem. I took a ring of keys he dropped. I suspect I know what they open. Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Eleven oh five PM As I thought, Horner's up to something strange. I wonder what's in that doctor's bag of his. Perhaps the manuscript I found can shed some light on what's going on, but first I must find someone who can translate it. Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. Eleven fifty five PM. Oh, Bill went out into the night ahead and over bed. He saw a pretty woman in white dress as the day she wed. She was really quite a fright of Bill began to dread. She gave him such an ugly bite, he bled and bled and bled and bled and bled and bled. Oh, Bill put up a royal blush to cut off his blue head. <laughs> It's a rather tasteless song. Oh, don't be too harsh on them. He's frightened. I heard the regulars at the Saucy Jack sing a grisly song about the blue for lady. They may have been laughing, but their fear was apparent. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. 
Father Janos confirmed my suspicions today. The knife was Quincy's. But what does the knife have to do with vampires? <sighs> Whoa! Bullseye! Quincy? But you're dead. Look at you now, little brother. All grown up. This calls for a drink. Why don't you belly up to the bar? This can't be. This can't be! The circumstances of Quincy's death plagues me throughout the day and haunts me at night. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Six fifty AM Seven o'clock AM Hello, Alexander. Would you like some breakfast? No, thank you. How are you feeling today, Juliet? Tired. So very tired. What have you done with the garlic? Dr. Van Helsing has put it up for Juliet's health. Oh, that's my doing. Juliet could barely breathe for that awful odor. I finally threw them out and opened a window for her. I'm sorry, my dear friend, but I don't think I shall be strong enough to see your father off. I feel as though I've been running, just like in my dream. I feel so very weak. Oh, you silly goose. I wouldn't let you go to a dreary old funeral in your condition anyway. You stay right here and don't budge a muscle until we get back. I'll have Miss Culpepper stay here to keep you company. Oh, there's no need to do that. I'll stay with you while the others are away. Here. At least you can be with us in spirit. I have seen two things today that bother me terribly. First, the absence of the garlic Van Helsing left, and second, Juliet's refusal of the cross necklace. Certainly neither bode well. Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. 'm to read about our local ghouls or a bit of games that go pardon me you ain't had dug up an entire cemetery they did took everything coffin and all between you and me and friend Max says whoever done it must have sneaked in during the day he locks that place up tight as a drum at night after picking up a paper I pasted articles of interest in my journal Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. I read your journal, Jonathan. To think all this happened. It's monstrous. Yes, I sometimes prefer to believe it was all the product of a fevered mind. But I know better. Indeed, had it not been for me, I fear my senses would have deserted me completely during those trying days. 
I'm glad it helped you, but... But what? I fear there may be pages yet to be written. Nine o five a.m. I'd like to go to ten Campton Hill, Notting Hill, please. Nine thirty five a.m. Nine forty five AM Nine fifty five AM Ten o'clock AM Miss Culpepper? Hello. I'm here to see Anna set. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. She's at the funeral. I'd like to go to 33 Coventry, Paddington. 9.30. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I would like to end this sad event by announcing that there will now be a gathering of the friends of Andrew Bowen at the home of Arthur and Regina Holmwood, Lord and Lady Godalming. Everyone is invited. Alexander, have you met Reverend Jenkins? No, it's my pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Uh, Mina has told me something of your situation. I believe I may be able to send her something tomorrow morn, which could help you. Thank you. Alexander, the Homewoods are about to leave. Oh, Lord and Lady Godalming, I must thank you for your kindness. Think nothing of it, my dear. Do you remember my old patient, Renfield? The bug eater. Yeah, very well. Well, recently... If ever there's began. anything I can do for you, please let me know. You're very kind. Attending Andrew Bowen's funeral brought back images of Quincy. To think that vampires might have been responsible for both their deaths. It's unthinkable. I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. 9.30. I'm glad you could join us, Alexander. Renfield has become even wilder than when you saw him. <laughs> so, the esteemed doctor comes to learn from me. <laughs> You're too late. Too late. Too late. The master has been reborn. Revived. Oh, out with it. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. The master will have his revenge. You're too late. <laughs> and then, then he will make me like him. <laughs> Doctor. You're too late. Too late! Too late! <laughs> I guess now we're even. A life for a life. It does not matter. Nothing matter now. What men feel say if true means we all dead men. First vampires and now lunatics. That's the second time I had to stop a madman. I may have saved Dr. Van Helsing's life, but I'm afraid I can't wash away his pain and sorrow. Twelve ten p.m. Twelve ten p.m. I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. 12.50 p.m. 
I can't thank you and Arthur enough for all you've done. Well, think nothing of it. So, where is young Quincy? Oh, we've sent him off to be with his grandparents. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, what with the holiday and all? You must be counting the days until his return. Actually, we've found ways to pass the time. I do wish Juliet could be here. I don't believe the two of you have met her. She's been quite ill recently. So, tell us about your wedding plans. Oh, I've already picked out a dress of the purest white. Father would have been so proud. I'm sure he would have, my dear. I'm sure he would have. The gathering at the Homewoods was pleasantly uneventful and certainly a kind gesture from Arthur and Regina. They are true friends. Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. Professor, I didn't think to find you here. Oh, Mr. Morris, please sit. Let me tell you, when lunatic is trying to kill you, you drink too, yeah? Thank God Renfield did not succeed. Yeah, thanks be to God. And to you, Mr. Morris. But if what he is saying be true, then perhaps I wish otherwise. Tell me what's happening, Professor. For Quincy's sake, if not for mine. Ah, if Quincy were here, then I would have strength enough. I'll not hear this, sir. You were the strongest among us. If you falter in these times of trouble, what hope is there for the rest of us? You are right. I must not give in. i tell you what is disturbing me so. In all my thoughts, my nightmares, never did I conceive of this. He has risen, Mr. Morris. Dracula. How can this be? As yet I do not know. We meet at Jonathan Harker's house tonight. We must be putting this fiend back into his grave forever. Wait a moment, Professor. I found this at a local bookstore. Ah. Ah. Oh, Romanian. Oh, here's the word for amulet. And here death, and here life. Clue, this might be. I have a friend at university, Randall Briarcliff. Perhaps he is saying more. Come to Harkos tonight, bring this with you. Thank you, Professor. I shall meet you tonight. I met Van Helsing at the pub. He told me Dracula is alive. Could it be? There is a meeting tonight at the Harkers I must not miss. He also recommended I give the manuscript to a professor at the university. It could be a clue to Dracula. I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate, Kensington. The stairs are down the hall. Go straight and you can't miss them. I'm sorry, I'm not looking for the way out. I'd hoped you could help me with this Romanian manuscript I found. What? Why didn't you say so? Here, have a seat. <coughs> Authentic? I do believe it is, yes. It appears to be a medieval book of magic. See, it's just filled with, with so-called spells. Here's one that's tied to an amulet of power. It also speaks about bringing the dead back to life. Well, my, uh, let me just jot down a few notes, and I promise I will tell you more tomorrow.
I've been given the most curious coin. Well, let's see. It's not chocolate. <laughs> Ah, yes, it's uh, from the Transylvanian Principality. Yes, it's, it's solid gold, but uh, not especially rare. I would say that your friend has recently holidayed on the continent. Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Five fifteen PM. Excuse me. Do you have any books on vampires? What? What did you say your name was? Alexander Morris, sir. Well, Mr. Morris. I would advise you to leave such things which do not concern you well enough alone. Those who unearth such things often end up in the earth. Unbelievable. Alfred Horner actually threatened my life today. I want to find out what his secret is, but I mustn't take his words lightly. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. 5.15. Mr. Morris, I have examined the cloth you left me. It is close to 125 years old. I believe it is a burial cloth of a royal family. The Middle European weave supports this theory. The bloodstain is recent. Randall Briarcliff. Middle European. I received a reply from Briarcliff concerning the cloth. It is indeed over a century old and is of Middle European origin. I wonder if I know anyone knowledgeable about that area. Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. 6.55 p.m. This is the strange white cloth I found in Andrew Bowen's hand. Mr. Stransikowski, I hope you'll pardon the intrusion, but I understand you hail from Czechoslovakia. Well, you see, I've come across the strangest fabric. I understand it's of Middle European origin. I was wondering if you... My might wife! Know. You stole this from my wife. I buried her in this dress. Damn you! You stole this from my wife! You stole this from her! They lied. I knew she still lived. They lied. I'm coming, Ileana! Whenever I see Stransikowski, he acts even stranger than the last time we met. The poor old sot. Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. You are all wondering why I am calling this meeting, yeah? Well, you all come here for the same reason ten years ago. Count Dracula, the Prince of Darkness. Once again, he has risen from beyond the grave. Impossible. It can't Nonsense. be. Oh. Brandy, quickly. Yeah, I am feeling like Mina when I am discovering the truth. Now, I am ready for what we must do. But you helped us kill him. 
You assured us we had nothing to fear. Once we had no fear. Now, I am telling you what I find. Miss Juliet Adams has the Nosferatu bite on her young neck. That doesn't mean it's Dracula. You yourself said he isn't the only vampire. There be more, my impetuous friend. I am seeing our old nemesis Renfield. I know he has once again fallen under Dracula's power. I believe it as strongly as in anything I ever believe. But how could he come back? What could he possibly want with Juliet? That I am afraid I do not know. Actually, I believe I may have come across something. At the Goldacre and Horner bookstore, I chanced upon an odd Romanian manuscript. Dr. Briarcliff at the university said it uh, mentioned a spell to bring back the dead and an amulet of power. It could well be that this is somehow tied to Dracula. After all, Juliet is Devlin Goldacre's fiance. Yeah, all these things, they may well be connected. I must be thinking on this. To work we get. Jonathan, from your office we work. Mina, we spare you the invasion of your home. Alexander, you see to Miss Anaset. Help her to be watching Juliet. Let me know when our Dr. Briarcliff is telling you more. I'll check with some other solicitors and see if we can pinpoint the demon's havens. I'm going to check on Regina. I'll not lose another to that fiend. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, my friend. Van Helsing's story may have put the fear of God into our friends, but they seem more than capable of the task at hand. I feared the news might drive them away, but they seem more than willing to carry out whatever Van Helsing may be planning. Well, gentlemen, we meet again on the morrow. Yes, that will be fine. Doctor, just how powerful is this Count? Oh, he can do many things. Powers of storm and beast are just a few. How did you stop that wolf? Wolfsbane. Why would a wolf run from this? I'm afraid that was no mere wolf. We must be checking on the others. Make sure they're all right. What are you waiting for? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. The circumstances of Quincy's death plagues me throughout the day and haunts me at night. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. <laughs> 6.50 a.m. 7 o'clock a.m. Hello, Alexander. Would you like some breakfast? No, thank you. How are you feeling today, Juliet? Tired. So very tired. What have you done with the garlic? Dr. Van Helsing has put it up for Juliet's health. Oh, that's my doing. Juliet could barely breathe for that awful odor. I finally threw them out and opened a window for her. I'm sorry, my dear friend, but I don't think I shall be strong enough to see your father off. I feel as though I've been running. Just like in my dream. I feel so very weak. Oh, you silly goose. I wouldn't let you go to a dreary old funeral in your condition anyway. You stay right here and don't budge a muscle until we get back. I'll have Miss Culpepper stay here to keep you company. Oh, there's no need to do that. I'll stay with you while the others are away. Here. At least you can be with us in spirit. Ah! 
I have seen two things today that bother me terribly. First, the absence of the garlic Van Helsing left, and second, Juliet's refusal of the cross necklace. Certainly neither bode well. Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. So, you come to read about a local ghouls. Or a bit of games that go. Pardon me? You ain't had. Dug up an entire cemetery they did. Took everything, coffin and all. Between you and me. My friend Max says whoever done it must have sneaked in during the day. He locks that place up tight as a drum at night. After picking up a paper, I pasted articles of interest in my journal. Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. I've read your journal, Jonathan. To think all this happened, it's monstrous. Yes, I sometimes prefer to believe it was all the product of a fevered mind. But I know better. Indeed, had it not been for me, I fear my senses would have deserted me completely during those trying days. I'm glad it helped you, but... But what? I fear there may be pages yet to be written. Nine oh five AM I'd like to go to ten Campton Hill, Notting Hill, please. Nine thirty five AM Nine forty five AM nine fifty five AM ten o'clock AM Miss Culpepper? Hello. I'm here to see Anna set. I'm sorry, Mr. Morris, she's at the funeral. I'd like to go to 33 Coventry, Paddington. 9.30. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I would like to end this sad event by announcing that there will now be a gathering of the friends of Andrew Bowen at the home of Arthur and Regina Holmwood, Lord and Lady Godalming. Everyone is invited. Alexander, have you met Reverend Jenkins? No, it's my pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Uh, Mina has told me something of your situation. I believe I may be able to send her something tomorrow morn which could help you. Thank you. Alexander, the Homewoods are about to leave. Oh, Lord and Lady Godalming, I must thank you for your kindness. Think nothing of it, my dear. Do you remember my old patient, Renfield? The bug eater. Yeah, very well. Well, recently... If ever there's began. anything I can do for you, please let me know. You're very kind. Attending Andrew Bowen's funeral brought back images of Quincy. To think that vampires might have been responsible for both their deaths. It's unthinkable.
I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. I'm glad you could join us, Alexander. Renfield has become even wilder than when you saw him. <laughs> so, the esteemed doctor comes to learn from me. <laughs> You're too late. Too late. Too late. The master has been reborn. Revived. Oh, out with it. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. The master will have his revenge. You're too late. <laughs> and then, then he will make me like him. <laughs> Doctor. You're too late. Too late! Too late! <laughs> I guess now we're even. A life for a life. It does not matter. Nothing matter now. What then feel say if true means we all dead men. First vampires and now lunatics. That's the second time I had to stop a madman. I may have saved Dr. Van Helsing's life, but I'm afraid I can't wash away his pain and sorrow. Twelve ten p.m. Twelve ten p.m. I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. Twelve fifty p.m. I can't thank you and Arthur enough for all you've done. Well, think nothing of it. So, where is young Quincy? Oh, we've sent him off to be with his grandparents. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, what with the holiday and all, you must be counting the days until his return. Actually, we've found ways to pass the time. I do wish Juliet could be here. I don't believe the two of you have met her. She's been quite ill recently. So, tell us about your wedding plans. Oh, I've already picked out a dress of the purest white. Father would have been so proud. I'm sure he would have, my dear. I'm sure he would have. The gathering at the Homewoods was pleasantly uneventful and certainly a kind gesture from Arthur and Regina. They are true friends. Please take me to 20 Surrey, The Strand. 'Professor, I didn't think to find you here. Oh, Mr. Morris, please sit. Let me tell you, when lunatic is trying to kill you, you drink too, yeah? Thank God Renfield did not succeed. Yeah, thanks be to God. And to you, Mr. Morris. But if what he is saying be true, then perhaps I wish otherwise. Tell me what's happening, Professor. For Quincy's sake, if not for mine. Ah, if Quincy were here, then I would have strength enough. I'll not hear this, sir. You were the strongest among us. If you falter in these times of trouble, what hope is there for the rest of us? You are right. I must not give in. I'll tell you what is disturbing me so. In all my thoughts, my nightmares, never did I conceive of this. He has risen, Mr. Morris. Dracula. How can this be? As yet I do not know. We meet at Jonathan Harker's house tonight. We must be putting this fiend back into his grave forever. Wait a moment, Professor. I found this at a local bookstore. Ah. Ah. Oh, 
Romanian. Yeah, you know, here's the word for amulet. And here death, and here life. Clue, this might be. I have friend at university, Randall Briarcliffe. Perhaps he is saying more. Come to Harkos tonight, bring this with you. Thank you, Professor. I shall meet you tonight. I met Van Helsing at the pub. He told me Dracula is alive. Could it be? There's a meeting tonight at the Harkers I must not miss. He also recommended I give the manuscript to a professor at the university. It could be a clue to Dracula. I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate, Kensington. The stairs are down the hall. Go straight and you can't miss them. I'm sorry, I'm not looking for the way out. I'd hoped you could help me with this Romanian manuscript I found. What? Why didn't you say so? Here, have a seat. <coughs> Authentic? Huh? I do believe it is, yes. Yeah. It appears to be a medieval book of magic. See, it's just filled with, with so-called spells. Here's one that's tied to an amulet of power. It also speaks about bringing the dead back to life. Oh, my, uh, let me just jot down a few notes, and I promise I will tell you more tomorrow. I've been given the most curious coin. Well, well let's see. Uh, it's not chocolate. <laughs> ah, yes, it's uh, from the Transylvanian Principality. Yes, it's, it's solid gold, but uh, not especially rare. I would say that your friend has recently holidayed on the continent. Please take me to 12 Oldbury, King's Cross. Five fifteen PM. Excuse me. Do you have any books on vampires? What? What did you say your name was? Alexander Morris, sir. Well, Mr. Morris, I would advise you to leave such things which do not concern you well enough alone. Those who unearth such things often end up in the earth. Unbelievable. Alfred Horner actually threatened my life today. I want to find out what his secret is but I mustn't take his words lightly. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. 'Mr. Morris, I have examined the cloth you left me. It is close to 125 years old. I believe it is a burial cloth of a royal family. The Middle European weave supports this theory. The bloodstain is recent. 
Brandon Briarcliff. Middle European. I received a reply from Briarcliff concerning the cloth. It is indeed over a century old and is of Middle European origin. I wonder if I know anyone knowledgeable about that area. Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Six fifty five PM This is the strange white cloth I found in Andrew Bowen's hand. Mr. Stransikowski, I hope you'll pardon the intrusion, but I understand you hail from Czechoslovakia. Well, you see, I've come across the strangest fabric. I understand it's of Middle European origin. I was wondering if you my might My wife! Know. You stole this from my wife. I buried her in this dress. Damn you! You stole this from my wife! You stole this from her! They lied. I knew she still lived. They lied. I'm coming, Ileana! Whenever I see Stransikowski, he acts even stranger than the last time we met. The poor old sot. Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. You are all wondering why I am calling this meeting, yeah? Well, you all come here for the same reason ten years ago. Count Dracula, the Prince of Darkness. Once again, he has risen from beyond the grave. Impossible. It can't Not be. Oh. Brandy, quickly. Yeah, I am feeling like Mina when I am discovering the truth. Now, I am ready for what we must do. But you helped us kill him. You assured us we had nothing to fear. Once we had no fear, now I am telling you what I find. Miss Juliet Adams has the Nosferatu bite on her young neck. That doesn't mean it's Dracula. You yourself said he isn't the only vampire. There be more, my impetuous friend. I am seeing our old nemesis Renfield. I know he has once again fallen under Dracula's power. I believe it as strongly as in anything I ever believe. But how could he come back? What could he possibly want with Juliet? That I am afraid I do not know. Actually, I believe I may have come across something. At the Goldacre and Horner bookstore, I chanced upon an odd Romanian manuscript. Dr. Briarcliff at the university said it uh, mentioned a spell to bring back the dead and an amulet of power. It could well be that this is somehow tied to Dracula. After all, Juliet is Devlin Goldacre's fiancée. Yeah, all these things, they may well be connected. I must be thinking on this. To work we get. Jonathan, from your office we work. Mina, we spare you the invasion of your home. Alexander, you see to Miss Anneset. Help her to be watching Juliet. Let me know when our Dr. Briarcliff is telling you more. I'll check with some other solicitors and see if we can pinpoint the demon's havens. I'm going to check on Regina. I'll not lose another to that fiend. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, my friend. Van Helsing's story may have put the fear of God into our friends, but they seem more than capable of the task at hand. I feared the news might drive them away, but they seem more than willing to carry out whatever Van Helsing may be planning. Well, gentlemen, we meet again on the morrow. Yes, that will be fine. Doctor, just how powerful is this count? Oh, he can do many things. The powers of storm and beast are just a few.
did you stop that wolf? Wolf Spain. Why would a wolf run from this? I'm afraid that was no mere wolf. We must be checking on the others. Make sure they're all right. What are you waiting for? I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Both Anisette and Juliet have gone to sleep, blissfully unaware of the threat hovering over us. So that they may rest, I shall watch over them this night. What's wrong, Alexander? What are you doing here? Don't be frightened. Alexander. After all, Alexander, it's only a game. <laughs> what are you doing asleep? We are the ladies. Oh dear Lord, quick, we have no time to lose. We are too late for Miss Adams. But we may yet save Anaset. Anaset? I mean, what happened? How did he get in? You, you leave now. You no good to us like this. Harker's office tomorrow morning. We give her fresh blood. But you, you leave. Sewer's my bag in the front hall. I can't believe I let this happen. That vile creature has befouled sweet Anisette, and Juliet lies murdered. How could I have failed them so? Seven o'clock, a.m. Fifty-six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Seven thirty, a.m. Mina? Over here, Alexander. He sent it. Reverend Jenkins. He sent it. Mina had Reverend Jenkins consecrate a cross for me. It makes me feel safer somehow. Please take me to 98 Rutherford, Westminster. 7 I kept a number of curious articles that I read in the paper.
I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. Hello, Alexander. Won't you come in for a cup of tea? No, thank you, Regina. Is Arthur about? No, I'm sorry. He went out on business earlier. Is there anything I can help you with? No, I don't want to bother you at this sad time. How was the funeral this morning? Oh, it was sad. But still a moving ceremony. Well, it is the comfort to us all, knowing that there is life after life. Well, thank you for your time, Regina. Please tell Arthur I called. Yes, I'm here to see Mr. Holmwood. Oh, I'm afraid Mr. Holmwood is presently unavailable. Please take me to 45 Fen Church, St. Paul's. Good morning, Alexander. Where's Arthur? I would have expected him here leading the charge. He sent a message saying he had to attend his coachman's funeral this morning, but hoped to meet us after Juliet's funeral at noon. When I checked on them after our scare last night, Regina said they hadn't seen anything, much less a wolf. I think they're all right for now. Excuse me, message for Dr. Seward? For me? Good Lord! There's been a fire at the asylum. At least one person is dead, and several more are trapped. I must be off at once. Yeah, we all need to be about our duties. We meet at Anaset after Juliet's funeral. Oh, well, Alexander, wait, wait, I almost forget. I need a steak so big and pointy. Oh, and a mallet, too. Good boy. Yeah. Please take me to 45 Holland, Notting Hill. I have just finished interpreting your manuscript and found it absolutely fascinating. The most fantastic part refers to this ancient amulet of power. Not only would it be part of a ceremony to raise the dead, but it would allegedly allow its wearer to appear as anything or anyone he desired. This amulet would not operate on its own, however, requiring a user already powerful with magic. I have reason to believe the trinket this legend is based on may really have existed. Please see me at your earliest convenience. Respectfully, Dr. Randall Briarcliff. Dear Alexander, this is a dictaphone recording of my last conversation with Renfield, made the night before he died. It did not strike me as surprising then, but now, please listen to it. I need someone to confirm my suspicions. Dr. John Seward. I'd like to go to 71 Queen's Gate, Kensington. Dr. Breyer. For Alexander.
I'm still weak from my shock at the university. May I never again see a sight as horrifying as that. Why do I feel like Dracula knows my every move? I'd like to go to 52 Bishop's Bridge, Paddington. God, what a mess. If you're waiting for Dr. Seward, it'll be a while. He's going to be busy for some time. I'd like to go to 33 Coventry, Paddington. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. She's got love duns to come see her off. I pity about that fella earlier. I guess no one wanted to see a headless corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I says, you gotta make what friends you can while you're still alive. That way, it ain't so lonely when you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Another funeral, this time for dear Juliet. If only I could believe she truly rests in peace. But that is not the case. Action must be taken. Please take me to 20, Surrey, The Strand. Mr. Morris, I got a message for you, Ducky. It's from a Mr. Olmwood. Alexander, I've discovered something of urgent interest to the both of us. Please meet me at my house at 9 p.m. tonight. Please take me to 45 Fen Church, St. Paul's. Of course I recognized you, sir. Mr. Harker left specific instructions to help you or his other friends in any way I can. The dictaphone is on his desk. Is there any other way I can help? No, you've been most kind. Very well. Call me if you need anything. Whatever possessed you to attack Van Helsing? Do you not value your own safety, your own life? Life? <laughs> what, what do you know about life? <laughs> you see nothing, knows nothing about life. There is life after life. After life, after life, after life, after life, after life, after life, after life. After life. life, after life. Renfield always had an unsettling effect on me, but for some reason this interview was very disturbing. Life after life. Have I heard that phrase before? Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Oh, my poor... 
poor Juliet. But she's still alive, Horner. She's still alive. He doesn't care about that, Devlin. He doesn't care about anything but himself and his own bloody desires. He has his own plans. We should never have freed him. Now we're trapped. Trapped by our own hands! Trapped? We're trapped? No, we're not trapped! <laughs> I can't believe it! A secret chamber in the Hades Club. I swear that the voices behind the wall were that of Devlin and his lackey, Alfred Horner. I believe Goldacre is going mad. Please take me to 20, Surrey, The Strand. Um, nothing, Rebecca. I just found the most curious drawings. Oh, well, that is odd. Oh, that must have been left by your friend, Mr. Goldacre. Oh, that's a peculiar bloke, that one. He was standing right where you is now, muttering away. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. That's disgusting. We must be doing it and doing it tonight. If we do not drive a stake into Juliet Adams immediately, heaven help those who be her next victim. Well, I've had no luck tracking the demon down. I've checked with every shipping clerk I know. I suppose Dracula doesn't make the same mistake twice. Our only option now seems to be stopping Juliet. All the death we have already seen. Even Renfield is dead, having been consumed in the fire at my asylum. I don't know if I'm capable of joining you tonight. Today's events have left me rather weak. I'll stay here with Seward. After all, Anisette's already been attacked once. This way I can stay close to Regina. That sounds like a good idea, my friend. The rest of us is meeting at the cemetery before dark. I did not look forward to the plan Van Helsing has proposed, but I know that it is the only way. I hope we are prepared to carry it out. Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Are you all right, Mrs. Harker? <laughs> Call me Mina, please. I'm fine, really. Well, you seem worried about something, Miss Mina. <laughs> Miss Mina is what Quincy used to call me. Can I confide in you, Mr. Morris? Certainly. I am very disturbed. I see glimpses of the Count in my mind. How? How is this possible? I carry a bond with him from years ago. At times I see him as though through a fog. What do you see now? It may help us find him. He appears different than before, but familiar. He seems close to us. Very close. I'm glad to know Mina Harker trusts me, but I'm worried for her. She still has a psychic rapport with Dracula, but she sees only hazy images of him and cannot yet identify the fiend. I'd like to go to 33 Coventry, Paddington. Kiss 
Commander, Jonathan, quick, come! What about Devlin? Leave him, his mind is no more! <laughs> Jonathan, protect me! Mina? No! Alexander, help me! I'm here, Alexander. No, Alexander! It's not here! <sighs> no, Alexander! <laughs> On top of everything else today, now I have helped kill Juliet Adams. I know she was already dead, but her scream will haunt me for the rest of my life. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. You fools! You fools! How you do this? You sleep and the monster will come! Stay back, if room. But how did Dracula get in here? Well, if none of you is protecting Anaset, then it fall to me. Also, I must hypnotize her as I once do Mina. Oh, I pray we find out what the demon be up to. Is that wise? Won't that tip Dracula off to our plan? Plan? What plan? We have no plan. But, Doctor, what can I do? Anything? Anything what at all? do I look like an old man? Out, out, all of you. You're no good to me here. How could I have let this happen again? I should have stayed with Anaset and fought that beast with my own hands. I fear for Van Helsing's safety. 8.20 p.m. Eight twenty p.m. Eight thirty p.m. Nine o'clock p.m. Hello, Miss Culpepper. I'm here to see you in a set. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Morris. She's not to be disturbed. Hello, Miss. Nine ten p.m. Nine twenty PM fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. I'd like to see Mr. Harker. I'm sorry, he isn't here right now. Ten o'clock p.m. I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. Stop me! I who have come back from the grave again and again, I will kill you and all your friends and feast upon your blood. <laughs> Doctor! Quickly, we must get him to my house. We can have Mina stay with Anaset. You. you. Get paid again. <sighs> Fifty six Rochester and Marble Arch Driver. Uh. 
I agree with your self-diagnosis, Doctor. You appear to have suffered a stoppage of the heart. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Mina, what are you Anna doing said, Where is Anna set? Mr. Goldacre told me Van Helsing wanted to talk with me right away. He said he would watch Anna set. Van Helsing is sent for no one. <coughs> Rest, <coughs> Doctor. Don't try and talk. Holmwood! Holmwood is... Off. Jonathan, what's wrong? Anna set! I'd like to go to 10 Campton Hill. Notting Hill, please. And a set! I'd like to go to 19 St. Augustine's, Westminster. Regina, where's Arthur? Regina! Regina? Dracula must have slain poor Regina months ago. Somehow he has used his accursed amulet to reanimate her and make her appear alive. But for all I have learned, I am no close to finding Anisette. Please take me to 21 Scarsdale Villa, Kensington. Don't bother struggling, my dear. Your pain will soon be over. Dracula? No, you are not he. But he will be here soon, very soon. You see, he needs Anaset. And he will do to her as he's done to my Juliet. Never, never mind! And, no, brilliant. You see, he will come. I've baited the trap. And now he will find out who the true master is. <laughs> Oh, Anna said, I'm so sorry I put you through this. <laughs> Hold on, I get shot. Dear friends, we're together again. Oh, Arthur. Thank heaven you're here. He's not Arthur. No. I slew him and his wench months ago. Now no one can hear your screams, Alexander, as I flay the ready flesh from your body. And you, my dear Alicent, with you by my side, I will be ready to reign again, ruling the night for all eternity. Stop, demon! Come no further! <laughs> you poor fool. I am Lord of the Nosferatu. I have ruled the dark for centuries untold. Do you really believe this mere trinket can stand between me and my bride? No! You cannot stop me. Nothing can stop me. Nothing!
Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won! Now Anaset and I look forward to the coming dawn and a bright new year. How cruel are the fates. Arthur and Regina never had a chance. Dracula gave them no warning he had returned. Thank heaven it's over. Yeah, it is over, my friends. And we are all alive. And Dracula is gone forever. Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won! Now Anaset and I look forward to the coming dawn and a bright new year. Dracula Unleashed is really more than a movie or a game. It's, uh, it's an interactive movie where the player will go ahead and be able to determine the outcome of the movie based on what he's done. While a movie has a beginning, middle, and end, we also have those things, but we have multiple middles and multiple endings. Uh, in that way, the player can go ahead and win ultimately or maybe just barely win and maybe you know lose in a variety of different ways. Also, on his way to trying to solve the game and uh, destroy Dracula, he'll be able to go ahead and change the storyline based on what he's done, who he's seen, um, where he's gone, um, what objects he's picked up. So all these multiple things that the player is allowed to do, that interactivity will allow him to go ahead and change the outcome of the game. Really what we're doing here is we're combining Hollywood and hardware. We're merging um, the interactivity of an adventure game with video um, to allow us to uh, have a new type of experience for gamers. Um, that full motion video is really the next extent of adventure gaming. Big difference between uh, Dracula Unleashed and something like Bram Stoker's Dracula is the fact that we really don't want to rehash the whole book. I mean, that's not our goal, and it's been done, and it's been done very well. Um, we wanted to go ahead and start the game about 10 years after. And we bring in all the same characters that you remember, Abraham Van Helsing, Dr. Seward, Renfield, people like that. And then we introduce new characters, especially Alexander Morris, who's our uh, main character, who's the brother of Quincy Morris, who ended up killing Dracula. Our feeling was, if you've read the book, why bother playing the game? You know the outcome. You know who kills Dracula. You know everything about that. We wanted to make it that much more. Um, one of the big questions asked is what goes into the production of something like an interactive movie. And uh, first of all, we need to know what our objective is, which is to make um, something that is very scary, obviously, a gothic horror game that builds a lot of suspense to keep people you know, constantly playing it again and again and again. 
Um, and to keep that interest high, we go ahead and have a ton of different scenes we shoot, over about 150 different scenes that the player may or may not see his first time through. Our costumes, we've got over 150 costumes that have been designed for our characters, over 40 characters. And of course, because it's a Dracula game, you have to have all the special effects, all the fog, all the gore, the stakings, the vampire women, wolves, or whatever. Um, we know that that's essential to the game, and we wouldn't do without it. The most exciting uh, aspect of this whole uh, shoot is really the collaborative effort among all the artists, the makeup artists, set designers, prop stylists, the uh, wardrobe artists, uh, and they all have a vision. And from a director's point of view, the, the biggest challenge and, and sometimes heartbreak, most times uh, rewarding is getting everyone's vision uh, copacetic so they can all come out as one uh, final piece, whereas it all seems connected. The greatest challenge of shooting a film for the video game of Dracula Unleashed is that every viewer has their own concept of what Dracula should be. There's a, a long history of Dracula films. And the challenge we put upon ourselves is to try to create as realistic an environment for all viewers possible that they can easily lose their disbelief and, uh, and get uh, absorbed into all the, the drama of this piece. Like any good movie or book or adventure game, I'm not going to tell you the ending, uh, or multiple endings in this case, and this is what really drives the player to keep coming back and playing it again and again and again. Uh, whether he's seen all the things he doesn't know, you know, has he killed Dracula in the ultimate way? Has he uh, solved it in the best way possible or, or whatever? I mean, these are the things that keep people coming back and back and back to play these types of games, and certainly Dracula Unleashed won't disappoint anyone. This is the note that Juliet asks me to give to Devlin if I see him. One more time, it, yeah. Yes. This is the note that Juliet asked me to give to Devlin if I see him. You say they put a D at the end of Devlin for some reason. It's just Devlin if I see him. This is the note that Juliet asked me to give to Devlin if I see him. Devlin. Devlin. Devlin if I see him. Is that all right? The last one, do it let's again. Try, yeah, let's try it again. Uh, asked me. Asked me. All right. This is the note that Juliet asked... <laughs> Asked. This is the note that Juliet asked me to. This is the note that Juliet asked me to give to Devlin if I see him. Try it again. Undo another word. This is the note that Juliet no, asked me. Just say asked me. All right. All right. This is the note that Juliet asked me to give to Devlin if I see him. This wolfbane reminds me of that. This wolf's. This wolfsbane reminds me that we are dealing with supernatural. Sorry. This wolfsbane reminds me that we are dealing with the supernatural. I received a note from Arthur asking me to meet him at his house by 9 p.m. I wonder what he wants. I wonder what it, I he wonder thought, what he could want. What? What? Uh, what an amazingly beautiful night. Never has the sky been so clear nor the stars as crisp. I have asked Anaset to marry me, and she has a sec... <laughs> that's okay. I, I, need it, I need it word for word, bud. Oh, you do? So that, that's going to be a sky event as clear. What a grisly shock. I went to visit with... I went to visit with... Is that a sentence? I went... Uh, I went to visit with Arthur Homewood, only to discover that his coachman had been killed, yeah. I went to visit... I went to visit Arthur Homewood. You want to cut out with? Yeah, cut okay. out with. Yeah. What a grisly shock. I went to visit Arthur Homewood over... N only to discover that his coachman had been killed, decapitated. Dracula, the demon himself. I felt his very raw evil as soon as I saw him. His very raw evil. <laughs> yeah. Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won. Now Amulet and I, now Amulet, <laughs> now Anaset and I look forward to coming to the dawn and look forward to the coming dawn and a bright new year. Oh, go ahead. That journey will take forty minutes to go from St. Paul's to Westmin Westminster to Westminster. Yeah, the last two times yeah, yeah. without a without a hitch. To Westminster. 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 That's right. <laughs> oh, I love those guys. <coughs> They're oh, great. We are rolling. And where will be? Uh, and where will we be off to today? This fine day. I'm um, sorry. And where will we be off this fine day? And where will we be off to? To this fine day. And where will we be off to this fine day, sir? 
Better bundle your co- Baby, baby, boo, baby, boo, baby. Lady, what? And where will we be? Sorry. And where will we be? <laughs> I gotta just stand up for a second. You're going down the road. Yeah. And where will we be off to on this fine day? Second, then. Why don't you uh, tip it up? You want me to try something else? Well, that sounds good. Like, why don't you go, go ahead and give it a try now? All right. And where will we be off to on this fine day? Seems funny to me that you'd want to go somewhere you already are. The <laughs> got beat. I'm the Beatles. That's <laughs> Ringo, I think. <laughs> it seems funny to me that you'd like to go. It seems funny to me that you'd want to go somewhere that you already are. You sound a little bit angry there. Okay. It seems funny to me that you'd want. It seems funny to me that you'd want to go somewhere that you already are. I'll tell you where to go, sir. I'd like to tell you where to go, sir. God. Where will we be go? Where will we be going tonight? Where will we be going? Where will we? And where will we be? <laughs> Don't be afraid to say the will there. I think yeah. you have to okay. need it. All right. And where will we be? And where will we be going tonight, sir? Regina, where's Arthur? Regina! Regina? And what might you be doing at this hour? Well, I, I don't... Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to detain you for some questioning. I shall take this time to update my journal. So many interesting events. Arthur, where are you?
It's monstrous. Arthur and Regina never had a chance. Dracula killed them upon his return. He gave them no chance. It's finally over. Dracula's dead. Yeah, but to lose so many. Goodbye, John Seward, my friend. If only I'd acted sooner. Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won. But not without a casualty. Goodbye, John Seward. Such a tragedy. Dracula killed Arthur and Regina upon his return. No warning. Dracula's dead. At least it's over. Over for John Seward. Goodbye, friend John. Oh, to lose my dear Jonathan. Oh. If only I had acted sooner. Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won. But not without casualties. Goodbye, John Seward. Goodbye, Jonathan Harker. Such tragedy. Dracula killed Arthur and Regina upon his return. But now he is dead, and you were safe. But such a terrible cost. All our friends, dead at Dracula's head. If only I'd acted sooner. Well, Quincy, it's through. I feared your great sacrifice might have been for naught, but we won. But not without casualties. All of our friends have fallen to the beast. If only I could have stopped him sooner. so bad during the holidays? sends his regards, his final regards. Now Anaset will be mine, and you will die. <laughs> oh no, I must have fallen asleep. Can I help you? Oh no, that's The blue... And it's said, is that you? Oh, Alexander. It's late. What are you doing here? I was so worried about you, Alexander. And I was so lonely. It's cold. You don't have a coat. Here, take mine.
Jonathan, protect me. Mina? No! Alexander, help me! I'm here, Alexander. No, Alexander! It's not here! <sighs> no, Alexander! Now what? <sighs> oh, no. Don't bother struggling, my dear. Your pain will soon be over. Dracula! No, you are not he. But he will be here soon, very soon. You see, he needs Anaset. And he will do to her as he's done to mine. Anaset? Don't bother struggling, my dear. Your pain will soon be over. Dracula! No, you are not he. But he will be here soon, very soon. You see, he needs Anaset. And he will do to her as he's done to my Juliet. Never, never! No, brilliant. You see, he will come. I've baited the trap. And now he will find out who the true master is. <laughs> And I said, I'm so sorry I put you through this. Hold on, I get shot. Dear friends, we're together again. Oh, Arthur. Thank heaven you're here. He's not Arthur. No. I slew him and his wench months ago. Now no one can hear your screams, Alexander, as I flay the very flesh from your body. And you, my dear Anisette, with you by my side, I will be ready to reign again, ruling the night for all eternity. Stop, demon! Go no further! You do not order your master. I command your faith. And it shall be death. <laughs> Daylight starts to fade away. The night will soon possess. Tomorrow brings the sun again. But now it is time to rest. Hello, Alexander. What are you doing out here all alone? Juliet? If you were mine, you would never be alone. If you were mine, you'd be mine forever. Oh, no, this, this tragedy beyond measure. With you gone, who is to save us? Who can destroy Dracula's evil plans? But wait, there is still chance. Were you to try again, or <laughs> should I say rise again? Maybe, just maybe the Nosferatu could be stopped. Our fate is in your hands. <laughs>